Meep meep. Welcome back to another Squirrely Hero review. This is a hero I've had forever. I used to use her all the time pre-nerf and I loved her so much I couldn't bring myself to recall her for Arbiter at the time, which I ended up regretting but now I have him so it doesn't matter. But finally, let's talk about Silver Blade Araminta. As always, we'll go over her skills, builds, a PvP showcase, and then a final summary. Let's get started. Alright, so skills. How does she work? So her S1 is very basic. It's just a, a regular single target attack. At max mola it has a 75% chance to burn the target. Um, and if you soul burn it, it has a 100% chance and it ignores effect resist. So you're going to burn them 100% no matter how much effect resist they have. So the that move itself is pretty basic, but do you see what happened there? That's the S2, and that's what makes her special. So on her S1, her S2 can activate. If the enemy is burned after using the S1, and it counts if the burn lands from the S1, it doesn't have to be there beforehand, then she uses Flame Release, which attacks all enemies with a 60% chance to also apply a burn before increasing her combat readiness by 25%. So she has a big CR push and gets a lot more turns than her speed might imply because she's always getting a 25% CR push. 25% is big every time she uses this passive S2 ability. You'll see it say increase combat readiness right there. And remember, it procs every single time that the target is burned. Now her S3, one of the coolest moves in the game, and it recently got buffed, it drops a giant meteor, and the special thing about this move is that it's the only 100% AoE stun in the game. Now regular Dominio is close, it's 90%, but this is 100%, no percent chance um, it's gonna stun them, which is pretty crazy. And now they added a 2 her two turn unhealable to it which is also a very annoying debuff if they don't have a cleanse and then it has a 40 percent chance each um, to inflict two burns i guess 50 percent at max mola two burn effects for two turns and remember if you have high attack on your araminta burns hurt a lot a lot probably the highest damage dps debuff in the game in pvp i mean poison does more in pve but burns generally do more in pvp so very powerful move. A 100% chance stun AoE is nothing to laugh at. And in the past, it was even more busted because it used to do three burns. They kind of dialed it back to two because that was so broken. Back in the day, you can literally S3. They get stunned. They don't get a turn. And then they die to burns before they get a turn. If you have the time, watch some pre-nerf Silverblade Araminta videos, maybe YD or something. It was hilarious how broken she was. Now let's go into her builds. Alright, so building Silverblade Araminta is fairly straightforward. The most common build is high speed, high effectiveness, and you use her as like a turn one control slash disabler. Now she does hit decently hard if you have Mola's in her, so if you have the gear, I kind of have her on throwaway gear here, obviously, like only one piece is reforged. Um, you can also give her high attack, and she actually hits fairly hard if you can get her to have good stats. Now I didn't need her to be that fast because I almost run her with an initiator like Flitica or Seedom or something and I don't really use her that much in general anyway, but typically you'd want her to be pretty damn fast, very high effectiveness, and if you have the gear quality, also amp up her attack, crit damage, crit chance, and she can actually do some pretty significant damage. I just don't have the gear for that right now. Um, another interesting build I've seen in the past, it's very rare, is some people are apparently running counter Araminthas, um, which is pretty funny because she can proc her S2 on a counter and push the team and stun people and things like that. So you can try experimenting with that, but that's definitely not a very common way to use her. Now artifacts. Um, the most common one is going to be Abyssal Crown, obviously. She synergizes very well with um, Abyssal Crown. I, I don't need to find it. You guys know what it does. If you guys don't have Abyssal Crown, another artifact I love on her is Sira Ren. Um, if you get it to plus 30, it's a 50% chance to land a pretty annoying debuff. Silence Sleep is pretty devastating, but honestly, decrease attack, decrease hit chance are both pretty strong. The only one that's probably kind of not that great in PvP is probably Poison. 
but even that's pretty good. Um, and if they have like one, two debuff cleansing abilities, stacking them up will really annoy them. Uh, I, those are the two artifacts I really recommend in some niche situations. I guess you could put her in like a uh, Caladra or Taga Hells or something, but really you want Abyssal Crown is probably the number one pick, then Sierra Ren. And in very rare circumstances, maybe you'd want to put her on violin, but she's not the greatest violin carry in my opinion. So those are her builds. Let's move on to everyone's favorite part, the PvP showcase. She's a lot of fun. All right, so let's have some fun with Silverblade in regular arena. I'm bringing Acid to outspeed this Rose, and then we're going to try a weird Athletica Cleave with very low damage because I suspect that that Lilius is a damage Lilius and try and slowly grind this team down. So, looks like we didn't even need to bring um, any speed here. Hmm. What should we work on? Or maybe we just work on this Lilius first. Very squishy. So definitely a damage Lilius. We're gonna do this. Push up my team. We're gonna do this. And wipe out DML Ken. Yoink. And then Silverblade Araminta to the rescue. Bloom, we deny their entire turn so they can't react to anything. And look, Seedom's being pushed all the way up as well. Um, looks like this Rose might get a turn though. We don't like that, so let's reset her. And you'll notice my team doesn't really have any damage except for Seedom. This is like a control team. So they're all locked down here. Um, we get provoked. Uh, I think we need to actually kill this DJ Basar somehow. Hmm. Or maybe we just finish off the Lilius and then they have no damage to their name. So Lilius goes down. We start working on this DJ Basar. So they're going to cleanse all this. But no big deal. At this point, their team is pretty neutered. So they're going to die in pretty short order here. We have the skill nullifier. And now we just finish off this little DJ Basar, blam, and the match is over. So that's what's cool about Silverblade Araminta. She basically negates an entire turn from them um, with the way her S3 works. A 100% chance to stun can be pretty, pretty devastating. So there we go, we wrap this match up. Let's try another one now. All right, now let's tackle something a little bit more meta. Quadruple ML5 team, FCC, uh, LR Crow, ML Tywin, and Ruel. We're gonna bring four junky mages, and I put all four of them on Taga Hells for maximum amusement. And let's see how this goes. This is a straight up lockdown comp. Look at all these souls I have. So we're gonna go, definitely gonna burn this. We try and push them back, which we will, because of Basar. The unbuffable will be cleansed, no problem. We're gonna boost up the Seedom. And tickle this Ruel a little bit. A lot of knights, so it's gonna mitigate a lot of damage here. And then we let loose the Meteor. Boom! And we do get stuns on almost everyone except this LR Crow. so let's try and stun him. Always a chance for 15%. We do stun him. Now their entire team is locked down. I'm gonna go ahead and burn again. Boom, Ruel goes down. Ooh, we got a dual attack from S10A there. Let's, um, hmm, what should we go on here? Let's go on to FCC, make sure that burn comes up. We push up CDOM. <laughs> now we burn CDOM again into this LR Crow. We'll finish him, make sure that immunity doesn't go up. And look, they're all burning. And you have poison on from s so... He's in big trouble here. My whole team might get stunned, but no big deal. And look, Silverblade Araminta and Seedom synergize very well together. 
because um, the burns count as a hit, so technically, Silverblade Araminta can do a 50% CR push on Araminta uh, on CDOM every single turn, because 10% from the first hit plus another 4 from the AoE crit, it gets pretty redonkulous. So as you can see, a quadruple ML5 meta defense picked apart by Silverblade Araminta with her good friend Sidon. And Araminta, of course, gets that last hit with the burns. And there, a normal meta champion defense picked apart by this goofy ass quadruple mage team. So I hope that kind of explains how to use her in regular arena. All right, so as always, let's go over the hero. Silver Blade Araminta, is she good? Yeah, she's pretty solid, but she's nothing that you absolutely need to have by any means. So let's just go right to the PvP rating. So Arena Offense, she's a solid B. Um, you, as you saw from the showcase, that 100% stun is pretty devastating. But the reason she doesn't really go above a B for me is because there's no ignore effect resist mechanic here. And the 15% when you're doing multiple arena matches, it means you're going to lose eventually when you fail to stun that one person like a Lilius or whatever it is that you absolutely needed to stun. So in terms of wiping out teams, when everything goes well, she is brutal. But 15% really means that, you know, every one in six matches, you're going to lose. So in terms of consistency, not too great in regular arena, so I can't really justify giving her higher than a B. Arena defense, I think she's like a D. I mean, um, the only way to really run her on defense is, for example, I, I don't know if you guys know Denjo. Denjo used to use her a lot, but that's because he had such better speed gear than everyone else that he could guarantee getting the first turn and basically he'd cleave you down with a turn one stun from Araminta. But nowadays, um, especially with Champ Zerato existing, uh, putting something like Silverblade on defense is... Um, a fool's game. It, it's not going to work very well. Anyone with a built champ Serato is going to pick that team apart. So arena defense, um, you're almost never going to see her. And if you do, it's going to be some kind of troll cleave team that if you have champ Serato will be very easy to work around. Guild Wars offense, I give her like a B. I mean, again, when she works, like if her S3 had ignore effect resistance, she would easily be an S. Um, but the thing is, in Guild Wars, you, especially the top tier, you don't want to lose one out of six matches because um, she got resisted. That's not consistent enough, that's not safe enough, and top guilds will kick your ass if you keep losing because you're using Silverblade Araminta. So when she works, she's excellent in Guild Wars offense, but um, just not reliable enough. I'm just going to give her a B there too. Guild Wars defense, I mean, same problem with arena defense. Um, one thing that people used to run was something like Basar Araminta Spez, um, which was actually quite powerful. But again, now with things like Champ Zerato, um, that defense is absolutely not viable. I guess you could try something like ML Roman Araminta Arbiter or something like that. But again, I think they could a, a decent player can just tank through that kind of damage. So Guild Wars defense, I'm going to have to give her a D as well. RTA is where she gets to be a lot of fun. Now, I don't cleave much or control comp much, so I don't use her, but if I did have the speed effectiveness gear to run control comps, she would be a staple because the way her S2 works, you're constantly AoEing people. On Abyssal Crown, I feel like she's absolutely toxic, just landing random stuns all over the place on top of a 100% stun on the opener. I think RTA is where she really shines. Um, unfortunately, I can't use her with my gear, and I don't run into her very often, but I'm sure she's quite good. So I'm going to give her an A in RTA. I think for people with the gear to run control comps, she's definitely a very toxic hero to deal with. Um, but I don't think uh, it's common enough for me to justify an S, but you know, maybe someone with really good control uh, gear would rank her even higher than an A if um, they were able to have enough of a lineup with that kind of gear to build full-on control comps. So anyways, 
That's my review of Silverblade Araminta. If you have her, congratulations. She's a lot of fun. If you don't have her, don't feel too bad. She's definitely not meta at the moment, and she's definitely not a hero that's going to immediately elevate your play like an Arbiter Vildred or an FCC does or a Dark Corvus. So she's not mandatory by any means. Um, I don't want to say that, but she's definitely one of the most fun heroes in the game. Uh, she was my first or second ML5, so she holds a special place in my heart. And if you do get her, you're going to have a blast. So anyways, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And thanks for watching. Till next time, boys. Peace out.